Neil Manth, welcome to the David Nurse Show. This is going to be an interesting, an interesting episode because I feel like just from studying you and talking to you here before we've got on the podcast, there's really not much that you haven't done mm. at all. But before we get to all these different things that we will cover today, start the audience off with a bang. Maybe something nobody even knows about you that you share for a first time, Oof. other than me butchering your name at the start of the podcast. That doesn't <laughs> count. Um, you know, this is... I've first of all, I'm a producer and a director and a writer, and I, I have been an actor in my career. But I, I really think of myself as a producer and an entrepreneur, and um, and I love travel. I'm, I'm I just can't stop learning enough, and and part of that component is to understand the world. You know, I understand what what a, a beer costs, what a taxi costs, what a four star hotel costs in in 126 countries. Oh. And sort of just that basic economic understanding, you're able to extrapolate a lot of things through their culture and through um, how their com economy works and how they play in the larger scale of the world. And and then you can dig a little bit deeper in understanding, you know, who they are as people. And then, you know, you extrapolate that into books and articles and other things that I've read. I'm a real student of history. And it gives me just a, sort of this base understanding of the world, uh, which allows me to then be more creative and, totally. and learn more. And so I would always, uh, well, I shouldn't say all, as much as I could, I would try and create TV shows or movies that would allow me to travel. Ah, and so, so I could go someplace, I could shoot the show, and uh, and then um, and then I could stay a couple of days and do two, three more countries, you know, maybe I stay a week or whatever. Because, you know, getting there is the hard part. Totally. That's the thing. And when you're there, it's like, whatever, I'll do a couple more countries in the middle, and I continue my episodes. And I often would buy around-the-world tickets I've circled the globe 10 times because it's easier that way. Once you go to three countries and you're moving in a direction, it's just like, keep going. And so then that would allow me to do oh, other stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I created this show for Sci-Fi Channel, and it was, it, was, um, it, was called, it was called Destination Truth. And it launched this career of a guy named Josh Gates, who now has like five shows on TV. Mm. He has a show on Discovery Channel called Expedition Unknown, where he's like an Indiana Jones guy, goes around the world. And he's got a, you know a hat and a fedora and a scarf. I mean, you know, he's got he's got he's the character. Yeah, every guy wants to be exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, he's also got the scars from it because you know it's this is rough stuff. You know the the whatever the thing is that we're looking for is never at the you know Hyatt Hotel. <laughs> it's always in the jungle or somebody someplace <laughs> rough. And so you know we would go really deep into places. If somebody said they saw a dinosaur in Papua New Guinea, we went to Papua New Guinea. Yeah, um, that's and awesome. so. We're in uh, Malaysia, and in um, Malaysia, for people who don't know where it is, it's it's in the, the uh, Malay Peninsula, yeah. which is in Southeast Asia. It butts up to Thailand. Right below it is Indonesia. Next to Indonesia is Papua New Guinea, and directly below Indonesia is Australia. Uh, and so that's the part of the world it is. And so we're in Malaysia, right right next to Singapore, and we're in this jungle or national jungle, whatever it's called, uh, Johor Bahru. And um, and this like ninety five percent of this place has not been explored, True. and so they Bigfoot has so supposedly been seen there, and um, and Bigfoot's a kind of a common character around the world, and he's yeah. a, a humanoid, a hairy humanoid. You know, some people see him as a, you know the Yeti, which is essentially a Bigfoot in the snow, mm -hmm. and and so we're deep in this jungle looking for Bigfoot and you know there's I love it I in my hut there was a spider on the ceiling that was the size of a dinner plate <laughs> I'll, I'll show you a photo of it <laughs> it's insane I hear, then, I've been to South Africa man I've seen some spiders down there yeah wow it, you know you walk around the jungle and suddenly you know you'd be like bleeding and you're like what is that and the guide oh. who was useless he's like oh it's a land leech I'm like why didn't I get like a oh. memo about land leeches so we're going around to these various places trying to find where Bigfoot has been seen and talking to locals. And there was a guy who had an account that he had a direct meeting with Bigfoot. And so we go – and first of all, as we go to every place, we'd, we'd like draw Bigfoot. What did you see? And people would draw him, and it was an orangutan. 
every yeah. time. Yeah. Now, Borneo is an island right next to Malaysia. Borneo has things called giant orangutans. Mm. There's no orangutans in Malaysia. And I would, you know, say to people, maybe it's a giant orangutan <laughs> since you haven't explored 95% of the jungle and they're literally right next door. Maybe somehow there's some here, right? Sure. And no, 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 it's Bigfoot. It's Bigfoot. <laughs> and so we go see this guy <laughs> in this hut and and the host, you know, is talking to him. He's like, so you saw Bigfoot? And he's like, oh, yeah, I saw Bigfoot. I saw Bigfoot. And it was, it was scary. It was scary. And he says, well, tell me about it. What, did, what happened? He said, well, I was scared at first. And then I approached him, and he was shy. <laughs> Bigfoot was shy. And he says, shy? Really? And he says, yeah, he was naked. I was like, okay. I mean, did you expect him to wear like a <laughs> suit or something? He's going to be like in um, North Face gear or something? <laughs> So it's I'm hilarious. like, okay, he's naked, he's shy. All right, great. And he says, and then he spoke. And I'm telling you, I, I was like, what? <laughs> he's naked, he's shy, and he spoke. And so the host says to him, yeah, what did he say? What, what did he say? <laughs> and the guy's straight face. He's like, he's like, <clears throat> hello. I am Bigfoot. <laughs> oh my god! Translated, obviously. Yep. Yeah, Google and we were just like out of there. That was it. That's hilarious. Crazy town. Uh, so that was funny. I don't think I've ever told that story to anybody. Dude, that is a that is a riveting story too. Yeah. yeah. Just the power of story. You've got me like just intrigued to ask you. Give me more of those, and give me more of those story time. Yeah. How, how do you feel like the, the the power of story in your life? Yeah. I feel like there's two parts of story. There's seeking it and going out there and creating story like it sounds like you've been doing your whole life of just hey bigfoot's in papua new guinea let's go down there and check it out yeah like that adventure seeking so let's start with that part first of how did you do that like the easy answer is hey it's just who i am but most people 60 percent of people never leave their home state yeah yeah so what is in you was it in you how you grew up was there some kind of shift in you that, like well, there are no limitations. Why don't I just go see the entire world? There is really nothing that I can't do. I mean, we'll go on the list of producing the O.J. Simpson trial when you were, what, 27? 26. Uh, 26. The Emmys that you have, ESP. Like, challenges and adventures don't seem to overwhelm you. Yeah. What is in that? I, I, let's try to unpack that a little bit. How? Well, I'm curious. Curious was a great I'm, I'm, thing. I'm not scared of anything. There's no place, no moment, and I've been to, to very dangerous places. I've been arrested in foreign countries a number <laughs> of times. Wow. I have never been nervous. I'm like, wow. I can always get out of here. Okay, how do you do that? How do you never get nervous? Because I know people that can hear this and like, well, this dude's just, he's just different. Like, he's just built different. Yeah, I don't, well, I, I can't, you know, I can't tell you why I don't get nervous. Confidence. Yeah. I'm extremely confident. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know who I am. I've traveled enough to know that I can bribe people very quickly to get them to do what I want to do in yeah. most countries. Um, and and um, I'm, I'm a short guy. But if I need to, I can be incredibly intimidating. Mm. Um, and I move very quickly. So people in foreign countries are just shocked. Like, what is this person? What are they doing? Mm. Let me just give him what he wants to get him out of the way. Um, <laughs> I was a big movie fan as a kid. Um, I, you know, I... I I love things like whether it was Gilligan's Island, The Creature of the Black Lagoon, or Indiana Jones. Mm. I loved the idea that you could those things still existed. Yeah. Lost World still existed. And when I started creating shows, I you know, a long time ago I realized in Hollywood there's no rules. There's you know, no rules. There's zero rules. You That's could do anything. Point. And and I I've always been a very good orator. I wasn't um I wasn't good good in school at all. I was highly dyslexic. And so I understood at a very young age that I had to be able to tell my stories mm -hmm. and and learn ways to capture people. Um, and then that moved into creating visual storytelling. And then as I got out of this sort of structure, you know, the school system, elementary and high school, is, is based on a you know, 1800s farming system. It's, it's just not <laughs> yeah. modernized. And when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s, they didn't identify anybody, A, who was creative. You were, you know, go in the corner. You're not following the rules, not a part of the thing. And I tell creators, I have a class now, 
uh, and it's on my website, neilmant.com, and I, and I basically educate people. It's called How to Make It in the Entertainment Business. Oh, and I, you know, right away I tell them, I say, you know, you're not normal. If you have taken this class, you're not normal. You're creative. You think differently. You think out of the box when everyone's trying to put you into a box. And people shun creatives as, at a young age. Yeah. Even as an adult, you know, I, I remember in my 20s, an uncle was like, when are you going to get serious about life? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I am serious. And by the way, <laughs> asshole, I already have an Emmy. You know, I'm like, what are you talking about? But Funny. there's just sort of this disrespect for creatives or artists. It's like, mm, yeah. you're going to be poor forever. Right. Well, who cares? There's nothing wrong with being poor yeah. as long as you're creatively fulfilled. And so I, I need that creative fulfillment. But somewhere in my core is a businessman hmm. who is able to see ways of doing deals. And, and I think big always. I and so tell. television networks like that, um, I'm I'm a good producer and a director. I always deliver a good product. And then it just kind of starts to compound. But it starts with just an incredible amount of confidence Yeah. that people as a kid, they're like, why are you so confident? Who do you think you are to be so confident? I'm like, I'm confident. Yeah. I'm, I'm a guy who's confident. Yeah. And I I'm going to learn to do things. And I always learn. All right. So I... I've, I've been asked multiple times, am I still in college? No, I'm not. I kind of wish I was. But the reason I get asked that is because my skin still looks so young. I'm far from college, trust me. And I haven't always had the best skin either, like blemishes. Just six months ago, I had a huge, massive breakout, but that doesn't happen anymore. And honestly, it is because of one skin. I'm a true believer in what one skin is doing. They are addressing the skin at a molecular level targeting root causes not just the the topical and, and trying to take blemishes away but they're actually they're, they're working on the root cause of what a, what ages skin and functionalities and makes it feel and look younger and they can actually reverse the age of your skin yeah nobody else is doing that my wife and i taylor who's got beautiful skin even more beautiful now we went up to headquarters in san francisco and watched how it all was done growing skin the testing that they're doing their one skin body one skin prep one skin topical supplement they're changing it they are reversing they're anti-aging anti-aging reinvented so one skin if you want uh if you want your money maker, your skin, the, the biggest organ in your body to be taken care of at the best level, this is for you. Oneskin.co, C-O, and the code for 15% off is David15. The link will also be in the show notes. That's oneskin.co, David15, and reverse your age. Yeah, I just, I, I just get the sense that you're not afraid of the results. You're willing to take the chance because you're not afraid that you know, someone's going to shoot you down or someone's... Or shoot me. Or sh <laughs> literally, or literally I've shoot pointed you. at me. I mean, yeah, all of it. Wow. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, just like, can we get like a little teaser about it? Was that in the foreign country when you got arrested? Yeah, Is that usually foreign countries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, usually. Usually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that means not always. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I was held, held up at gunpoint one time in, in New York City when I was 11. Um, but Jeez. another gun story, I was in Papua New Guinea. And we're, you know, in the jungles and we're looking for two different dinosaurs. Somebody saw a pterodactyl. Another person saw a brontosaurus. Man. No, brontosaurus. Uh, Stegosaurus. Is Stegosaurus, that the one that has yeah. the thing? You know, uh, the, the plates yeah. in the back of it? Uh, a lot's going down in Papua New Guinea, huh? You know, like this is real jungle, real tribal oh, oh, stuff. Oh, I know. There's, there's like the yeah, head cannibalism. Yeah, head cannibalism. Yeah, totally. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And I was in that area. Whew. And and I, I one time I was like, boy, if I wanted to get any electricity, even by a generator, it's it's forty eight hours of travel, like That's deep, wild. And so we're making our way through the jungle. And you remember that scene in um, Field of Dreams, Love where that movie. where the you know Ray Liotta comes out of the field and he meets everybody's hanging out, and then he goes mm. back into the you know the corn yep. and he just kind of ghostly disappears mm -hmm. so that's us we're not in corn but we're in jungle stuff <laughs> and we're you know machetes and mm -hmm. whacking and you know i mean it's rough and we come into this sort of clearing like in that mood we come through the the weeds and there is a a hole in the ground that looks like a meteor hit it and it's surrounding it in it and around it and on top of it's about 50 guys with ak-47 <laughs> and they all point at us instantly now i'm first of all i'm like what what is happening here separate of like i'm gonna get shot here and my crew like i'm thinking i'm gonna get in so much trouble 
if these people get killed. <laughs> That's, that's all I'm thinking. Hey, that's a true leader right there. You're not worried about yourself. You're no, worried about, I'm, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. You might be. And and so I'm, you know, sort of on my, like, what the hell is happening here? And our guide, uh, who was a disaster, starts speaking to them and explains we're a television show, you know, looking for monsters. And they explain that in uh, World War II, the Japanese held Papua New Guinea, a lot of terrible battles down in that part of the oh, world. Wow. And um, and Germans were helping them, and there was many rumors of German transport planes filled with gold. And so these guys are treasure hunters, and they're looking for gold that they think wow. had crashed there in a plane. And you know, in those places, you you crash something, and a week later, jungle is over it. Yeah, and and just forget about you know seventy five sure. years. Um, and so they, you know, then we ghostly went back into the. <laughs> the jungle and, and then set up our camp looking for the dinosaur but i would think about these things sometimes i'd say you know what people say they see things and you know whether it's a chupacabra or a dinosaur or you know bigfoot i don't discount that they saw something i don't necessarily believe it's bigfoot but it could be something that could eat me yeah sure you know i'm in a jungle where you know they, they probably saw something else at night and they're like oh that's bigfoot because mm, we'll talk mm. about it but maybe it's a giant orangutan. I'll rip my head off. Isn't that funny though? Like you've been to all these places and you see this Papua New Guinea that's 95% jungle inhabited. And people think, well, oh, there can't be anything else out there. You, it, it, you know, I know through travel, like there's so many areas that people haven't been to no. and it's really hard to access. Like there can be other stuff out there. Yeah, why it's not? It's just not walking down the street in Los Angeles is where we live and we're no. not seeing that like that. So being a visionary, and I'll, we'll, we'll loop it back to the power of story, and I want to talk about the courses that you're doing and, and how important that is just teaching people to tell their story. Not, if you, not even if you're an actor, obviously if you're an actor, but just in anything in life, you have to be able to tell your story. You have to be able to teach in stories. That's how mm -hmm. people learn, and that's how they listen. I think that's incredibly powerful. So I want to loop back to that, but I think the, just even deeper in the sense of you have a visionary aspect to it. You've been working in the... AI, VR space, before anybody knew what those letters stood for. Yeah, 2015. 2015. There's probably two other people doing what you were doing. What, I guess, what have you seen in that? And can you almost project where this is going to go? Is totally. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I, I can tell you exactly what's I don't even happen. have to add pride questions. Okay, good. No Take problem. Off. No problem. Take off. So um, there are there are a few things that are happening right now that that are going to come together. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell people, let's look at the primers. And what are the basic things that have already happened that will most likely merge? Um, and then you have to think about well, what other creators or organizations need to come together to realize that, right. and then you can sort of project a timeline based on things that are happening. And so, sort of the big picture story is the internet is changing. Mm. You know, we've gone through two, two iterations of the, of the internet, and each time the first internet and the, the Wi-Fi and cellular internet, it was very different from the cable to the wall internet. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is big. And I, I watched people make a lot of money, and I saw people it impact society in different ways, and I was like, I wanna be a part of that train. Yeah. And in my business, so, you know, for years was very transactional. I have to come up with an idea for a TV show or a movie. I'd have to create a sizzle and materials and I have to go in and I have to sell these guys. And then I'd have to, you know, make content and have to be great. And, you know, it, it's hard. Like, you you know, you're here, you know, lots of people. How many people sold a television show? <laughs> it's very, my wife's in that space. Yeah. It is very hard. And I sold over 20 of them. Holy smokes. So, That's you know, amazing. It, it, it's pretty remarkable. And I'm very remarkable. Pretty, pretty excited about it. So yes, I, you should. I looked at that space, but it's grinding, you know, to, to sell and then to make it. And I had a, a studio in Hollywood and I have, you know, 30, 40 people on staff. And I found myself that I was just, I was working for them. Yeah. You know, if there was money left over at the end of the year or projects, then it went in my pocket. But every penny went to making sure that they stayed there so I could continue, continue to have a machine. Hmm. And that was just tiring after a while. And I thought, you know what? I want to get into the situation where I can create something that will create an ongoing revenue stream passively. So, good. so I said to myself in 2010 or 11, when I was sensing what is now called cord cutting, 
people leaving cable and just moving onto the right. internet to consume content. And then Netflix came out, and I, I said, this cable model where I've you know lived is going to crash. And I didn't know when. I, I sort of predicted around 2023, 20, 2024. I believe it will happen next year. It's pretty much happened. But mm. when, when ESPN pulls out mm-hmm. and they go to an all-subscription mile, that will just destroy cable. Yeah. And so I said, you know, I'm going to be there when the next internet happens, whatever it will be. And the next internet, which we are in right now, is um, is a 3D internet. Hmm. And we're just sort of beginning the transition of it. Uh, the, the World Economic Forum in 2015 referred to this shift as the fourth industrial revolution. Now, the initial one was steam power, uh, which led obviously to the industrial revolution, uh, then electricity, and then you know media and technology. And now we're moving into what's hypermedia. Hyper. And it allows, and we're seeing this, where people can create companies very quickly using technology. Um, anybody will have access to this kind of stuff soon. We've already seen it, you know, a bit with like things like YouTube, where you know there are hundreds of millions of creators around the world. Where before it was like you were in Hollywood, hmm. or you're doing local news. Mm. There, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't possible. Mm-hmm. But you can now make something with an iPhone, or you know, we have these great cameras here that are very inexpensive. It's a whole different ball game. Totally. And so as I looked at that, I said, well, you have this three dimensional internet coming, which is also called a spatial web. Another group of people call it the metaverse. Yeah, the metaverse okay. is just a name for the three-dimensional mm. internet. Don't get confused about it. It is simply the way we're going to see the internet will be through two ways primarily. It will be through augmented reality and virtual reality. Mm-hmm. And in the sauce that makes it all work is artificial intelligence. Mm. And so AI has been around forever. You know, how do you think? You know, you're always getting the same ads over and over on totally. Facebook. You totally. know, you're being fed that plaid shirt that you bought Come on, man. six years ago and they keep yeah. trying to sell it to you. They're you know? always hitting me, yeah. And so um, <laughs> AI is a part of everything, but what we've seen this year through ChatGPT and MidJourney is what's called generative AI. And this is what has Hollywood freaked out because the AI, through prompting it, telling it, you know, I want to make this, help me, you know, you write one sentence and you're like, write me a paragraph in the tone of Jane Austen. Or you write, you just tell it, you say, I'm, yeah. I like a song about a, a guy who has a girlfriend and they're in high school and they break up and then they come back together, but the girl mm. really loves the guy. And you just type that and you say, make this in the vein of a Taylor Swift song. Mm. Make this in the vein of, you know, Busta Rhymes. And they will, it will do it. And really good. And it, well, the key thing is you have to go back and forth with it. So it'll give you a nice pass. And then you, oh, I, you got this phrase, right? You got this, right? You didn't, you know, this suck. Change this. And it has no, you know, feelings, so you can <laughs> tell it whatever you want. But that idea, um, it, you know, think about it, if you're writing on a television show, they have had these minimum amount of people that have to, or minimum amount of people that have to work on a show. So if yeah. it's a weekly hour show, there's maybe eight, ten people in a writer's room. That's minimum guaranteed. Well, now you don't need that. You could, you know, one guy could write a draft, put it into the computer. You would program, you'd throw every episode of every show you've already made in there, and you'd say duplicate this and, and extend, expand the characters, and then it would spit it out, and then one or two people could work on that. You don't need 10 people to work so on that. So true, yeah. And so it's going to disrupt, and same thing with an actor. You know, I could scan you day one, and you know now I can use it for the rest of the series. And of course, you're like, that's, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. But the job yeah. will change, yeah. and the job will be you work one day, and that's going to be the way it works wow. now on the flip side and you'll probably get paid more for that one day maybe there's a residual involved but there's no reason to continue to have those costs for them to have not just pay you but pay the crew so the crew's going to be disrupted because of that the, the flip side which is amazing is the actor who had always relied on first getting picked out of a lineup and then getting pulled into a production that had great producers and great directors and real money into it and a real studio and real distribution they don't need them anymore they exactly. can use the AI to make themselves the star of a TV series or a movie. And so just like we saw the democratization of content creation through social media platforms, which, again, hundreds of millions of people, you're going to see that happen again, which is going to lead to an amazing amount of new content, but a flood of, of content. And it's going to start really somewhere in the neighborhood of 2025. Wow. And and I, I think by 2028. You know, okay. So what I'm about to tell you is going to literally blow your mind. It did mine. 
For a month now, I have been trying out Go Exec. I'm going to tell you what this is. So just to preface, I always look for the extra added advantage, the 1% edge. And, and usually it's something physical or, you know, it's something mental. But I've never found the balance of the two. And it's, it's crazy because as being a, a type A, very driven person and I want to just have great impact, I don't get a whole lot of sleep. I work a lot of hours. There is stress, frequent travel. I mean, raise your hand if you can. Uh, y- y- yeah, you really relate to that. But what Go Exec is doing is the mental and physical balance. Now, they bridge the gap between mental health, physical health, high quality, scientifically formulated nutraceuticals. So let's have an ingredient spotlight here. Bio PQQ. You know what that is? Yeah, I didn't either, but now I do. Energy, endurance, and longevity. Scientifically shown to slow the aging process, increase energy levels, and improve cognitive function. It has won award after award for the best ingredients that are, that are used for the mental and physical performance of best science. PQQ is naturally occurring essential nutrient found in foods such as kiwi, green peppers, potatoes, tofu, and green tea. So what, what GoExec is doing, they're putting this into pill form, and you literally, physically, and mentally are more focused, less stress, longevity, you're on fire. It's been great for me. And for me, being a high performer, it's tough to tough to see the change a lot, you know? But I actually have been feeling it. And what GoExec is doing, because they are so cool, awesome people over there at GoExec.com, G-O-E-X-E-C.com, stands for Go Execute, 20% off. David Nurse 20 is going to be your code. David Nurse 20 at checkout. GoExec. Dot com. Trust me, you're going to be on fire like I am. Go check it out right now. You know, it's fascinating. It's crazy. So this is, I mean, obviously why the writer strike, why the sag after actor strike, because of that yeah. likable of being able to take who you are and use it throughout the entire series. Do you think that this will become a thing in terms of, and I've thought of this in sports, and it could obviously be in, in Hollywood, of selling your personal rights so let's say an athlete or an actor sells their rights for a fee maybe Mm -hmm. it's a high fee and literally like that's what they live off for the rest of their life like that's out there isn't it yeah i think it's even in sports too like what what would you do all the nfl players get together and like we're going to sell our rights you sell it to you can do whatever you want with it ai you can create these games it's almost become video games and now the athletes don't even have to play the game Like, there's a dangerous world in that. You're hitting on a bunch of points here. Yeah. Which are exciting. So let's kind of break it down slowly. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a 101 (laughs) over here. You're you're a 1001. So I think about those kind of intellectual property rights and rights of publicity all the time. This is a key thing. I mean, you you nailed what I think is one of the most important things about what's about to happen. Yeah. So let's, again, let's understand that between AR and VR— it will be 95% AR and 5% VR. Mm-hmm. VR will be a tool for training and some immersion. And, you know, maybe I'm, I got a friend in, in Europe and we're together. Young people who grew up native with this, they won't think in time and space the way we do. We, we are anchored to this world. They will think in time and experience because space has no relevance in virtual mm-hmm. reality. You could be anywhere, be on the planet or whatever else. And so, but it will be augmented reality. We will wear glasses Uh, Contact lenses were created by a company called Mojo Vision in 2019. Hmm. It won best of fest at CES. These are facts. Yeah, yeah. So we can't argue facts. Oh, I shouldn't say that. People argue facts all day long. (laughs) All day long. You shouldn't, but you you can. But, you know, your audience is a sophisticated audience is looking for real information. Yeah. So we'll give them the real information. So let's take a step back and build into this part of the story about the people and the athletes. So in 2016, I I saw Pokemon Go. Mm. Saw the craze of it. You saw it, mm-hmm. right? You probably mm-hmm. played it. You Pokemon Go guy? I actually didn't. I, I mean, I played the cards when I was a little younger, but I just, you know, I was so mature I didn't play it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So um, when I looked at Pokemon, I saw the brilliance of using the mobile phone uh-huh. to create an augmented reality experience. And you could use the phone. It would open up the camera, and you were able to see this spatial 
Pokemon mm. and other characters from the from the, the right. stories. Right. And and what three dimensional media, what it does is it has an, a, a very unique impact on the brain. If you're reading or you're watching two dimensional content, your brain is going through a process that's called learning. There's a memorization involved in it. I was not good at that in school. It didn't work well with me as a dyslexic person. Mm -hmm. And so I'm more of a visual learner. And a lot of people are visual learners where you are experiencing it. Like right now we're together. For I have sure. a wholly different understanding of who you are of who you are than when I looked at your website and other stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm I'm experiencing you right now. Yep. And so that is not learning. The experiential uh, content is understanding. Mm, I understand you on some level now, and you understand me at a different level. And Pokemon, I then understood. So at the very minimum, I could look at the cartoon, you know, or a movie, and I could place myself in my brain in the scene because I know how tall Pokemon is. I have but this sense of presence with it in a multitude of ways. At the same time, as I think about the future and I think about intellectual property rights, this is a crime. Pokemon is a business that needs to activate on privately owned property. Mm -hmm. And there's never been a moment in the history of time where I could go on someone's private property and set up a business and not <laughs> tell them and make money. <laughs> it's like going on someone's house That's and you know, point, selling man. hot dogs That's or watches. Good point. You, know, you can't do that. Yeah. And so it was litigated quietly. Most people don't know about it. And they lost. Mm -hmm. And they have a form on their website that says, you know, you got here's how you remove an asset. But that requires the public to learn about that and then do it. And you have to sort of dig to opt out. Where in the early days of email it was all spam and now they have the anti spam act. So we get an opt out automatically. Mm -hmm. Where Pokemon should immediately offer an opt out, but they don't because you know it really hasn't been pushed that much and people are they don't understand it. They don't think about it. And so when I looked at that, I thought, well, will there be more Pokemons? Will there be a Grand Theft Auto? And when we move to augmented reality glasses, whenever it happens, which I think is probably about 28, will you'll see more aggressive first-person shooter games that, you know, that are using the real world like Grand Theft Auto. It's based on the real yeah, world. Yeah. Of course wow. you will. Yeah, totally. And so what, what disruption will that cause for businesses Man. and real estate? And then I went to the next level and I thought, oh, well, if that's going to happen, and I'd seen Blade Runner and Ghost in the Shell and you've seen all these movies, yep. why wouldn't you put an advertisement on a building? And because Facebook is going to move to be on a pair of glasses and everything else will, you know, you'll put the glasses on, you won't see anything, but you'll activate an app and then you'll see the road with a blue hue to it and you'll see Facebook stuff and mm -hmm. photos that you took that you tagged in places will be able to be discovered you know, three-dimensionally because mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. camera has two lenses on it and the AI can predict the back of the person. And eventually you'll be able to go to the bar where the scene happened and you'll see the full scene happen. You know, maybe the birthday party that you weren't invited to. And yeah. you get to go there and see them talk crap about you. Man. <laughs> so, you know, now that opens up a whole different level of revenue for building owners to license their building for advertising, which because you see different ads than I see, Facebook will need to use the building because that's what the human brain expects it. Wow. They won't want to put it on the sidewalk or just jumping out at you or on a tree. Wow. The brain will expect it and accept it on a building. So now you're looking at a whole intellectual property right world that buildings never thought about, real estate. And you won't need a permit. Uh, and so this is now, and it's clickable. It leads to understanding. So you have a better understanding of the product. It leads to a higher conversion rate and Goodness. makes money. And if that can happen, well, why can't? LeBron James sell his face. Exactly. Why can't Steph Curry be dressed in a Gucci suit, visible in augmented reality, but not in the real world? He's uh, walking around in a sweatsuit. Uh, yeah. Why can't you know Tom Cruise have a motorcycle just kind of trailing him as he's walking on the sidewalk? Of course that will happen. Oh my god. And then that yeah. means that anybody can do that. And I could see a scenario. Forget about you know the augmentation of glasses. Instagram could send an email to everybody right now and say, you know what, you're you're an influencer. I overlooked you. You have six followers, but you're an influencer. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a list of brands. You pick from this brand, all this list, whatever you want, and you're going to say Nike, right? And they, you know, he says, okay, great. You tell me, David, how many times a month will you be cool with, in your photo now, me augmenting a Nike swoosh on your shirt? And I'm going to pay you for that. 
And you can pick all the brands up and put like, you know, a Gucci ad on the back wall or, yeah. um, a, you know, Ford Mustang, a little, little thing mm. in the, on your desk. Mm. Who will take that money? Everybody. Everybody. Every teenager will do it. And it will be subtle. No doubt. You know, people won't know that. So now you look forward and you think about a basketball game. I got LeBron James on the court. We're all wearing glasses. I certainly can look at him and it with a full facial recognition or his number on the jersey will be recognizable. And I could, with my fingers in the air, sort of point and pull up his stats and just activate him in a number of ways, buy his T-shirt right then and there. But what's the rule going to be in the game about his face? Will his face be able to be scanned inside the arena and launched to the LeBron James website? Or will they require it within that environment to go to the Lakers website? Mm. So intellectual property rights and human beings and in buildings are going to monetize at a whole different level. Hugely. And the, the flip side of that is if the neighborhood doesn't control the messaging, it will be a digital form of graffiti. And, you know, this stuff's going to talk to people. So you walk up to a hospital. There's a 100-foot tall guy in the hospital. He looks like your, you know, your, your doctor. And he says, hey, David, I saw you search cancer on the Internet last week because it's all connected to the Internet. Maybe cancer go away is good for you. And then you get sick. You may go on the internet and tweet, you know, and say, oh, I got sick from this augmented reality doctor that sold me a drug on the building. And then perhaps some people would say, you know what? That seems odd. I don't think I'm going to go to that hospital anymore. Uh -huh. and we've seen people canceled in seconds on the internet. Seconds. So the building could be canceled, thus dropping the financial value of it because people don't trust it. And that could happen in seconds. Wow. Neil, my mind is blown. Mm. It, it makes total sense. It is literally like, because I was wondering why I would see people that are buying property on, like you called it, the metaverse or. Oh, that's a junk. That's, that's crap. That Forget part's about that. crap. That's okay. crap. That's but crap. there is going to be a, like, so this world that we're in, there'll be a whole nother world that we're able to access through these glasses. Endless where you, worlds. Endless worlds. Yeah. And this endlessly is personalized. A, Man, and it's, a, it's years away, a handful of years. Yeah, it's but already not started. that far. No, no, no. It, well, it it's already started. As yeah. an example, the Flatiron Building in New York, Snapchat uh, did an activation in partnership with HBO, and you could look this up on the internet right now. Go ahead and Google it. Type in Man. Snapchat, um, uh, Flatiron Building, Game of Thrones, uh, variety, daily variety, and you're going to see that there was an activation a couple of years ago, 2019, where if you open Snapchat and you hit that filter, you would see this giant dragon fly down on the dragon building. Dragon lands on the flat iron building. I mean, it's an advertisement, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell the building owner. <laughs> they didn't ask for permission. Yeah. I mean, I guess you probably don't until rules and regulations are put in place, but uh, almost there's not rules and regulations for things like this yet there right? are there's tons of them oh there are yeah okay. well there's a there's a law called the lanham act that is specifically focused on Crazy. false endorsement with advertising and commerce this isn't free speech and you're gonna lose all day on free speech yeah but that exists you know there's trespassing is a law you know you can't trespass people are trespassing to do these things uh the anti-cyber squatting protection act says that you know you someone can't pretend to be you on the internet we well, can't pretend to be the owner of a building. Mm -hmm. And so all the laws are there, but no one's put it together. And so I've been working with a number of very large law firms, and I've been talking to real estate owners since 2016. I have a number of very large partnerships. I, Dude. you know, basically I represent most of Las Vegas Boulevard and some other really famous properties in the world. Wow. And, and I sort of think of me as a guy in the 80s that went around and started going to property owners and farms and buildings. And I said, you know, there's this, there's a universe coming of where people can use cell phones. And they're going to have to put the cell tower someplace. I'd like to represent your interest in that business. That's a good analogy. And the number one REIT in America is called American Tower. And it's from the people that went around and collected all the cell tower rights. My goodness, yeah. So there's this huge business. Oh, huge business. You know, that happened. And it's, it's uh, no different than sort of the, the music business. Man. You know, if you own the Beatles library, you kill it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you're in, getting a nickel off of buildings and their money i may make a buck someday and where can we go to learn more about this i mean selfishly i want to just learn everything i can about this this is just i'm just trying to wrap my mind around it but there is a intellectual property is going to be a billion on billion on billion dollar industry huh? trillion i guess yeah 
trillion, trillion. or whatever comes after because the world will be activated and yeah. continuously gamified you know we're always being gamified in the real world click on this do this whatever yeah. you, give me your data sign up for this and so it's about trying to keep you engaged as much as possible and the world will become one giant you know subliminal video game you are a wealth of knowledge man because i want to finish up by talking about story scope and what you're teaching online because yeah. i know how powerful teaching story is is there anything with this on there too i mean i yeah, of I think course. You're, just, you're one of, of the most fascinating individuals I've ever been around, Neil. And I'm not just throwing that. I've been around a lot of people. But this is this is crazy because this is the future. And it, and you know, it's the past. It's the past. It already started. For you, it's the past. That, that <laughs> for Game most of Thrones people is, listening. That's four years old, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Tell us about Storyscope. What can we expect? And we talked about originally looping it up to finish on the the power of telling stories, why it's so important, how this can, I mean, change your life, change yeah. your business, change your net worth is just in telling a great story. So I'm going to simplify this. That'd be good. <laughs> forget about movies. Forget about making videos on YouTube. Forget about all that stuff because that's not for everybody. There's only one story that matters. So let me, let me, us other than our health, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What, what do you think is the most important thing that we all share? That we all share? Everybody. No ex no exceptions on planet Earth. I mean, I think everybody shares a deep longing for a higher power. No. Um, There's tons of people who are just like, whatever, I'm going to push this button forever. Now. The need for connection? Nope. Tons of people. We all have loners. a story, our own story. Uh, somewhat like uh, that. Oh, I was close. The number one thing is time. Oh, okay. That's a good answer. I mean, yeah. right? Yeah. You get on your deathbed, you're wishing you had more time. Yeah. Good the only, point. It's the Good only point. thing you can't buy or get more of, and you wish you had used it properly. Absolutely. There's no exceptions, except when I die, I'm going to be like, I did it all. That's my <laughs> yeah. goal. Well, I think you might already have. For although, those. You're on. although I don't think we're going to die. I think we're going to be in a computer. And we're going to move on to stuff. That's a whole different <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, time. And so our thought process with everything is how do I – build time machines that's it how can i deal with other people and save them time make things move quicker so i can do more things mm -hmm. and the second most important thing to time is what does the internet say about you when i search you mm -hmm. because we're all looking at everybody on the internet that's a good point yeah and sure. if the internet says nothing about you not cool you know people <laughs> are like oh i'm gonna be stealth and whatnot terrible idea you want to be discovered and you want it to say exactly what you tell it to say. Mm. So through writing articles, you know, blog posts or a couple of posts here and there, whatever whatever works for you. Again, video content's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. That is going to compress the time in convincing other people that you're of value in oh, life, whether good. it's dating or business. So yeah. the story is your own story. How well can you communicate to other people to compress time so they want to be with you. That's what matters. Wow. Wow. Neil, I don't even know where to take it other than I wish we had about three more hours <laughs> on this podcast. This is just fascinating stuff. All right. So the last question I have for you. Well, first of all, how can we all find more about this online, your website, Storyscope, how to yeah. follow you, how to get inside your brain, if at all possible? So I... You know, I, I've done so many different things. Yes. And um, and it, through its core, I've been an entrepreneur. I've only been hired by people a handful of times. I, I'm just really not interested in working with people. But I did. I was a reporter for yep. some years. And I was um, uh, I produced producer at the Olympics. I produced the O.J. Simpson Grimmel trial. And I produced the Golden Globes and a couple other award shows. But other than that, all my TV shows, all my movies, it's all yep. me, core me. And and through these adventure travels and, and trying to figure out ways to do everything on the cheap, but then get people to give me more money to make it bigger, through all of that, I learned so many things. And I've mentored hundreds of people who have gone on to have very successful careers, and I have these strong bonds with them. And it's been extremely fulfilling for me. I've employed many thousands of people. Uh, cool. But I move so fast and so hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never really had the time to, you know, sit and kind of look at myself. You know, you, you're 
you'd say my background's interesting. <laughs> I'm moving forward. Yeah, I get it. I, get I don't it. think backwards. I'm like moving yeah. forward. I'm like, oh, isn't that interesting that I did that or I did that? And so a few months ago, I um, I didn't graduate college back back in the day. Mm-hmm. I went for three years and I won the college Emmy and then I moved on. And I always was like, you know, what would it take to get the college degree? So I went to the university. I called the University of Detroit and I was like, hey, you know, you know, I called the chair of the communications department. I was like, you know, what do you think? And she's you know, back and forth. And we talked about you know me teaching there and maybe you know a couple of things here and there. And that would you know serve a long way to get me the degree and then maybe I have to take a class or two. And I was like, okay, well, if they want me to teach, and I was like in a 10 minute phone call, uh, I thought, well, there's other schools. So I sent out an email to like a hundred of that. the graduate business that. schools and a whole bunch just called me like, yeah, yeah totally. Absolutely. And then I thought about, again, I go to the business perspective. I go to the content, you know, I'm, I'm essentially going to be putting on a live show for an audience, the students and the distributor is the school and this, the audience is going to pay the school, and the school is going to pay me forty five cents. And I, you know, I'm like, that's not cool. You know, if you go to an expensive mm-hmm. school and you have, you know, thirty kids in the class, and you know, I can't do math, but let's just say it was ten thousand dollars for a class for a semester, that'd be very expensive school. But uh, you know, ten thousand times thirty kids would be three hundred thousand dollars. You know, or if it was five thousand dollars, which is a pretty median range, you're looking at one hundred fifty thousand dollars that would be generated, and I'd have to hump and hump. And so I thought. I'm too, not, not only am I going to be taken advantage of in this mm-hmm. content deal mm-hmm. um, where I know I will have an impact, but I can, I'm too limited. You know, I could only hit 30 people. And so I thought, you know what? If I sat down and I recorded in short form videos, three to 15 minutes, everything, everything we've talked about and then get more granular, how to even ideate, how to get a pitch meeting, what you do in the pitch meeting, what are the standard protocols, how to follow up, how to turn a no into a yes, how to go through production, oh. post-production, AI, VR, AR, you know, entrepreneurship, everything. And so I've done about 120 videos. It's about 13 hours of content, and it's going to be available on neilmant.com. You know, it's pro- maybe available by the time this comes out. Mm-hmm. You certainly pre-register. And I'm giving away a free course right now called Secrets to Pitching in Hollywood, and it it's a 15-minute course. It's free, and you learn the basics of it, the things I talked about, ideating and how to get in the room. Um, I knew nobody. Hi. I didn't know anybody. It's I didn't amazing. have any money. I came from a, you know, a very humble background, and I've just done it because there's no rules. Dang. And so I created this roadmap in short-form videos that is – I think it's – you know. Oh. It's certainly a semester easily, but I think it's from the feedback I've gotten from people who've taken it, it's a college degree. Oh, there's no doubt. There is no doubt. That is worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. And when that comes out, when this is out, it might be out right now when this is when we're talking here, but we will link to all that. Go get if you like anything that we talked about, but just the I mean, the power of the communication aspect and knowing how to communicate, knowing how to pitch yourself. People all think like, oh, no, nah, I'll never need to pitch myself. It's the most important thing. Oh, you're pitching yourself every single day. Trust me. Or, it, you're, or you're failing in life. Or you're, exactly, exactly. There's nothing more important. Yeah, you know, I just love how you have just taken any type of limitation that people place upon themselves and said, screw it, that doesn't exist. Not in my book, not in my world. And that is why you are living the life you are. And people can look at it but like, Oh, you yeah, know, we got this lucky break. No, 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 no. You create. No. You I'm, create. I'm, I've had a bunch of breaks. luck through the narrative of it. Yes. But I'm uh, I'm just, I Man. move hard. And I, I make that luck become the next thing. But you can't do what I've done and been lucky the whole time. Where <laughs> no. I've been lucky is I haven't been killed. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I've been lucky. Yeah, that's true. As many Papua New Guinea travels as you've had. Yes, yes, you yeah. are. Neil, you're amazing, man. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you for having thank me. You. It's been wonderful getting to know you.